So as we've just discussed, insurance means that eligible clients can get coverage for services and medications that take care of their HIV as well as those other conditions. Also, health insurance protects clients against high and unexpected costs like hospitalizations that could otherwise be financially devastating. And finally, health insurance is now required to cover a specific set of minimum benefits, including preventive care. These are called essential health benefits. Under the Affordable Care Act, each state was required to set up its own marketplace where people can go to select a plan and enroll in coverage or use healthcare.gov, which is the federal marketplace. So now under the ACA, insurance companies can only offer plans through the marketplace if they meet strict requirements. Plans that are available through these marketplaces are called Qualified Health Plans, or QHPs. Among other things, each of these Qualified Health Plans must cover these 10 minimum essential health benefits. So as you can see, these include things like emergency services, hospitalization, maternity care, and prescription drugs. This is a great list you can use to help clients see what will be covered no matter which plan they end up choosing. Then you can help them compare different plans to look at things like which doctors are included in each plan and how much things will cost. So let's talk about costs for a moment. Lots of people worry about getting insurance and how it might cost too much, but in the end, most people have been finding that it's quite affordable. This is because affordability is a key part of the Affordable Care Act, and financial subsidies are built in as part of the law. In fact, more than 8 out of 10 people that applied for federal financial help in 2014 got that help. And it's often even better than that for Ryan White program clients. That's because in addition to financial help from your state marketplace or healthcare.gov, clients can often get help from ADAP or a local Ryan White HIV AIDS program funded drug assistance program to pay remaining expenses like premiums and co-pays. And remember, the Ryan White program is still available to ensure coverage completion for your insured clients, services that help your clients stay in care like medical case management and transportation are often still available through the program. Plus, the Ryan White program is still there for your clients that are not eligible for coverage and those that are eligible for insurance but haven't enrolled yet. If some clients are not ready to get health insurance, that's okay. We know it can be a challenging process with some of them, and HRSA has been clear that you can keep these clients covered with Ryan White HIV AIDS program services as long as you are documenting and tracking your efforts. Your clients do not need to have any gaps in care while you're working on getting them insured or if there's any problem with their insurance once they're enrolled. We'll talk about that more later on in today's webinar. So what role does the ACE TA Center play in helping clients enroll these clients? We're going to tell you about some tools and resources that we've developed and how these tools respond to the challenges that providers face in enrolling clients. We're going to go over quite a few tools today, but everything can be found on our website quite easily. Today we just want you to get an idea of what we have to offer. Successful enrollment requires much more than just the application, and everyone has a role to play, not just navigators and enrollment assisters. ACTA Center tools are organized according to these seven steps to show all the different ways clients need your support throughout the enrollment process. Steps one and two are focused on what needs to happen before enrollment. This is the engagement phase where you help clients understand the benefits of getting health insurance and also help them talk through their questions and concerns about enrolling. Steps three and four are what most people think of when they talk about enrollment comparing plans, finding a plan that meets the client's treatment and financial needs, and submitting the application. Step five is following up on the application. Applications can be denied, but they can also be appealed. Lori will talk about how to do that in a little while. And step six and seven are about helping clients learn to make the most of their health insurance and making sure everything's in place so they don't lose coverage or end up with gaps in care. We've organized our ACTA Center tools according to these steps, so we'll keep coming back to this framework of seven steps throughout the rest of the webinar. The seven enrollment steps are also the basis for our online resource guide, which includes resources, tips, and tools 
for enrolling clients in coverage. All of the tools and resources that we're about to cover are posted here within various steps along the continuum. This resource guide is available through the Target Center website at targethiv.org slash ACE at the top of our Tools and Resources section. All right, so now we're looking at the ACE TA Center Enrollment Worksheet. This worksheet is designed to follow the seven enrollment steps as well, providing tips for each step and including space to write down key information for the client at each step. You can customize the tool, use just some sections, whatever works best for you. The worksheet also has two complementary checklists, a health insurance enrollment checklist and a health insurance renewal tracking check checklist. The health insurance enrollment tracking checklist and renewal check tracking checklist are short versions that just have the steps that aren't designed to capture detailed information on your clients. You can use the checklists if you already document this kind of information somewhere and just need a cheat sheet to keep track of exactly what to collect. The checklists are meant to be used by people that have plenty of experience helping clients with enrollment, while the worksheet is really the place you should start if you're newer to the process. The health insurance enrollment tracking checklist and renewal checklist are short versions that have just the steps but aren't designed to capture detailed information on your clients. Right now we're looking at an image of one of those checklists. This one is for plan renewals. Uh, next slide. So now let's get started with the enrollment steps and tools you can use to help with each one. Speaking of get started, which is step one, that's the name of this step. So the first step is figuring out what the client is even eligible for. Should they be looking at marketplace plans? Are they newly eligible for Medicaid? Or, particularly in states that have not yet expanded Medicaid, do they still need to rely on the Ryan White program for most of their care? To help your clients decide if they should apply for Medicaid, marketplace coverage, or neither, we have an eligibility decision tree that can be used with your clients. This tool helps guide people through a series of yes and no questions about what they may or may not be eligible to apply for when it comes to Medicaid or marketplace coverage. If you're already using the eligibility decision tree, I do recommend you download it again as we've just revised it to, to include a few updates and clarifications. Here's a close-up of the decision tree. As you can see, the first question is whether the client is a citizen or lawfully present in the United States. If they are, then the next question is whether they already have Medicaid or Medicare, or whether they can apply for employer-based health insurance. If not, then they can apply for a marketplace plan. I won't go through the whole decision tree right now, but you get the basic idea. This is a great training tool and might also be something to keep next to your desk for reference as you're talking with clients. Are you in a state that has not yet expanded Medicaid? If you'd like to know what resources, are, what resources are available for clients in states like yours, you can listen to this archived webinar from last fall. On this webinar, we shared effective strategies and resources and also heard from a provider in Alabama that has shown great successes in getting eligible clients enrolled in that state. So as we've discussed, the ACA plays a crucial role in expanding access to affordable care for people living with HIV. Here's a graphic to show you some of the specific ways the ACA helps clients at each step of the HIV care continuum, and also to show that the Ryan White program continues to be available to provide coverage completion by paying for costs, helping people that are not eligible, and providing services that can help people, even those with insurance, stay in care. It's very important to understand exactly what ADAP is, is able to help with in your state as well and what other resources are available in your local area and which Brian White services are available to your clients. If you aren't sure, we suggest, by talk, uh, we suggest you start by talking with your HIV program manager and then you might be able to check with your state ADAP program if that person doesn't know. Okay, at this point I'm going to hand it back to Tajan to tell you all about step two. Tajan? Thanks, Mira. So step two, the challenge here is to that your clients are going to have questions and concerns about enrolling in coverage. So step two is called address client concerns, questions, and fears. We know that some of your clients may have questions, fears, and concerns about enrolling in coverage. 
But this really presents you with a unique opportunity to help your clients increase their knowledge, their ability, and their confidence to find and compare information about health plans and select the plan that best suits their health and their financial needs. So to do this requires that we not only address language and terminology issues, but we also need to do all that we can to understand our clients' unique circumstances and help them navigate real and perceived barriers. And women of sisters need to be providing culturally and linguistically appropriate information so that clients can pick the, health, pick the healthcare plan that best meets their specific needs and also to help them learn how to actually use their new coverage. So before we get further into the content, let's do a quick audience poll. So our question is, when you talk with your clients about getting enrolled, what are they most concerned about? Are they most concerned about changing healthcare providers, medication coverage, the basics of health insurance, mistrust of health systems, paying for coverage or medications, or immigration status issues. So we have a few more seconds before we close this poll. All right, so it looks as if most of you are saying that paying for coverage or medications is the, 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 the biggest concern that your clients are, are, are having. And the second top concern seems to be medication coverage and then changing healthcare providers and basics of health insurance are, are also up there. This is to be expected and it's really consistent with what the literature is saying out there around what's most pressing and important for clients at this time. We're going to talk about a couple of ACE tools that will help you really navigate the real barrier of paying for coverage and medication with your clients. So I'm going to get into that in the next few slides. So the first tool that I'm going to talk about related to much of what we were, we were talking about prior in the poll question is a new a, a tool that we're in the process of updating. It's a discussion guide tool that we developed last year and we released it last year. It's called Talking with Clients About Health Coverage, Common Questions and Suggested Responses. So this, this updated tool will be released by the end of August in English and Spanish. It's not quite ready yet, but it will be by the end of this by the end of August. This guide is really designed to help enrollment assistance one consider cultural and linguistic factors that may impact enrollment, and two, anticipate your client's questions and prepare responses. The tool provides sample dialogues related to specific concerns often raised by racially and ethnically diverse Ryan White program clients. So enrollment assistors and other staff can use this tool to role play enrollment conversations with clients and get ready for conversations that you likely have with your clients. The language suggested in the tool can help you start these conversations but really, this language should be tailored to help to, to really meet and speak to each of your client's unique circumstances. So the way the tool is structured is that it presents questions, suggested responses, helpful tips, and it has lots of hyperlinks in it to resources for the five common enrollment concerns that we talked about in the polls before. So just to recap what those major concerns are is one, changes in healthcare providers and medication coverage, communication challenges, mistrust of health systems, paying for insurance and health services, and finally, immigration status issues. So it basically will help give you some guidance around how to address all of these major enrollment concerns that your clients are facing. So I'm going to read a quick example of a sample dialogue from this tool just to give you a sense of how it's structured and what it provides. So for example, your client might ask, does enrolling in health insurance mean I'm going to have a new doctor? I want to stay with the one I have now. The discussion guide offers the following script as a possible response for your client. If you want to keep your current doctor, you need to pick a health plan that your doctor accepts. I can help you look for plans that include your current doctor. I can also give you more information about other differences between coverage options and help you decide which plan is best for you. All plans include HIV providers, and if you choose a plan that doesn't include your current doctor, you'll probably get to know and trust your new provider over time. If that doesn't happen, we can help you find a different provider. The discussion guide also offers the following tip related to that specific enrollment concern. 
and the tip reads as follows. Changes for some clients will be minimal. Others may have to switch existing providers or pharmacies. Do not promise clients that they will not have changes in their current healthcare providers or services. Emphasize that most Ryan White program clients will have more services available to them. So that's just to give you a sense as to how that discussion guide um, is structured and how it can help you. The next tool that you're seeing on your screen is a new tool that we just developed, a brand new tool. We're really excited about releasing this. It's a tool that's been designed for clients. It's in plain language and it targets clients who have not enrolled in health insurance. The Get Covered for a Healthy Life brochure addresses common questions and concerns about health insurance and enrolling. So an assistant can go over this tool while sitting with a client and or give it to a client to take home for them to read it on their own. The tool is really intended to motivate your clients to enroll and move them from the contemplation stage, hopefully to action. It will be translated into Spanish in the summer, so you can download both versions um, from our website then. We're also developing a poster that can be hung in counseling, exam, or waiting rooms that's designed to get somebody to think or ask about health insurance or even ask about getting help to complete an application. There will be three versions of the poster online that will have three motivating messages for enrolling in health insurance from a client's perspective. You can select and print the poster that would most resonate with your clients. The next tool that we're going to talk about is our plain language glossary of healthcare enrollment terms. Now, this tool is available in both English and Spanish. It's been updated. It now includes a few more terms that it didn't before. Um, the tool is designed, again, for enrollment assisters to reference when you're explaining really confusing enrollment terms and phrases to your clients. The idea is that this will help build your client's understanding of common technical terms used during the enrollment process. It's an alphabetical glossary. Now, we know that there are lots of glossaries like this available, but this one is designed specifically with enrollment and people living with HIV in mind. So, for example, it includes definitions for terms like ADAP and things like that. And here is the Spanish language version. Now, you'll notice a small call-out box in the left-hand corner of your screen that has a list of terms in both English and Spanish. As you can see, the box is covering up some text. I just want to reassure you that the box doesn't appear like this on the actual tool. Rather, there's a complete list of terms at the end of the document that provides the Spanish and the English equivalents for each term. We also have an English-Spanish comparison table that's new and now available online that lists English and Spanish terms side by side. It's kind of similar to what you're seeing here in the call-out box. You can basically use this tool to compare terms and definitions in English and Spanish. So if you click on a particular term, then the definition will expand. That way you can look at the definitions for terms that you want to see. You don't have to see all of them at the same time. So it's a neat update that we've made. Now, on our website, you can download and print the entire glossary. There's a PDF available. Or you can use our web-based format here. You can get the specific terms that you need um, by searching. You can search by letter here um, to find whatever terms you're looking for. In January, the ACA Center offered a webinar titled Access to Health Coverage for Immigrants Living with HIV. This webinar has been archived and is available on our website. This webinar basically went through helping to explain how you can learn to talk about health coverage with clients who are living with HIV and newly immigrated to the United States or people who may have family members in this situation. Our presenters explained how some immigrants may qualify for marketplace coverage depending on their immigration status. They also talked about how immigrants can access other federal health care programs. Also, they shared culturally and linguistically competent strategies to help address clients' common fears and concerns around enrollment. Now, you can find a summary of the questions and answers that were asked during that webinar as well as other resources that can support you in your work with immigrant clients at this website that you're seeing here on the screen. We'll, we'll, it's probably likely that we'll, we'll rerun this webinar in the fall, so please stay tuned for that. Also, you can find resources related to engagement and enrollment of immigrants, LGBT populations, and other racial or ethnic minorities in the online resource guide that Mira talked about under Step 2. Also, we'll be offering a webinar in the fall where we're going to hear directly from organizations doing successful enrollment work 
with diverse Ryan White program clients, including Black MSM in the South and Latino populations in DC. So stay tuned for that as well. Now I'll turn over to Lori, who's going to review the third and fourth steps in the enrollment continuum. Lori? Thanks, Tajan, and hi, everyone. Um, I'm actually going to talk about steps three and four, but also um, some more after that. We, we talk about steps three, seven on this presentation. But before I do that um, and introduce a few more tools, let me just remind everyone that you should feel free to use your chat function on your screen if you have any questions about anything that we're discussing. We know that um, it's a lot of information, and we are going to open it up for questions at the end. But sometimes it's nice to get your question out while it's fresh in your brain. So if you want to chat it to us, uh, we'll be sure to address it. And um, you know, if we run out of time at the end of today, um, or for some reason are not able to answer your question today, all the questions that we receive throughout the presentation will be um, the answers will be posted onto the ACE TA site as well after the presentation. Um, okay, so on to some more tools. Um, as Tijan mentioned, I'm going to move on to steps three and four, which help address how you can help get your clients enrolled which includes working with them on both filling in as well as submitting their application so that they can get appropriate coverage. So in terms of helping clients fill out their application, we do have a tool called the Plan Selection Worksheet. And this can be very useful in either the open enrollment or the re renewal or the re-enrollment process. And what's most helpful about this tool is that it provides a structure to help your clients assess different things that are important to them in selecting their plan. So it's not so much a worksheet that's going to tell them which plan to pick, but it's a tool that helps them document all the different factors that go into their decision. Um, so the types of things that are captured on this worksheet, for example, are things like coverage for medications, uh, who their current doctors are, and maybe what services are provided by those doctors. And there's a spot on here for anticipated costs and whether payment assistance might be available, and it even has a place to list their state's ADAP, um, ADAP's preferred plans if that's something that applies to them. And then we also recognize that you know, even using something like the healthcare plan selection worksheet, that there's people living with HIV who have varying levels of experience with insurance. So there may be some fundamental concerns when they're talking about health coverage. And in turn, you know, enrollment assisters um, and all the folks like yourselves that are on the call may also have varying experience working with people living with HIV. So um, we have what we call uh, an enrollment fact sheet, and this is a tool that was designed for anyone that's working in the enrollment process, and the goal of this tool is to help outline some of those unique needs and concerns that people living with HIV might be faced with when they're selecting healthcare coverage. So these concerns include things like medication, uh, continuity of care, stigma, confidentiality, uh, and affordability, of course. And certainly these topics are important to keep in mind with all your clients, but particularly when you're working with people living with HIV because the research points to, that, to these issues really being the most common concerns when, um, when they're enrolling in coverage. And for those of you who don't do the actual enrollment assistance yourself, so maybe refer your clients to other organizations, um, orienting these organizations to these kinds of topics could be really helpful to them as well when they're providing enrollment assistance to your clients. So I mentioned that affordability is a key concern, um, but before I talk about a couple of tools that are specific to helping your clients get financial help in the process, I'm going to stop for a moment for a quick poll. Um, so I'm going to read I'm going to read the poll, and then because I'm having some technical difficulty, Mira is going to help um, summarize the polling results. So um, the polling question is: How comfortable are you explaining the kinds of financial help that can help get your clients covered? Are you not comfortable at all? Are you somewhat comfortable? Or are you very comfortable? And I'll give folks about I don't know, 10 seconds or so to think about where you would uh, rank yourself on your comfort level. And I'm here, Lori. So um, I'm Great. looking at Great. the results as they're coming in. Excellent. And I know everybody else can see results after you put in your response. So that's encouragement to participate quickly. And it looks like um, right now about almost two-thirds of you would say that you're somewhat comfortable. Looks like 58, 59%. And then another 27% are very comfortable and 13% are not comfortable at all. 
So I think that's just about what we expected. Um, everybody, I, I don't think anybody's fully comfortable with all the kinds of financial help and all the gory details of cost sharing and tax credits, but um, we're going to try to just walk you through the basics. And for those of you that do feel very comfortable, we're going to show you some tools to help you kind of uh, think about how to explain that to others. Um, so I think we can go ahead to the next slide, Lori. Awesome. Thanks, Mira. And I will say, you know, for those that maybe are only somewhat comfortable or not comfortable at all, don't feel bad because finance is obviously a very personal subject for most people. And so hopefully some of these tools will only help you get more and more comfortable with this topic. So as Mira mentioned, we know it's really hard to keep up with the details of things like tax credits and cost sharing and any other ways in which your clients can get some financial help when it comes to coverage. And so if you'd like to know more about this topic, we are actually going to be rerunning another webinar. I know Tijan mentioned a, a webinar that we'll be rerunning in the fall, but we're going to be rerunning this one as well. And it's called Financial Help for Marketplace Health Insurance. Um, and if you don't want to wait that long, if you don't want to wait for the rerun, you can always access the archived presentation by using the link that we've included right here on the slide. And then there's another resource uh, related to helping your clients get financial help, and that's this resource that we have called the List of Frequently Asked Questions, which we call in shorthand our FAQ. And the list was compiled by listening to enrollment assisters and patient navigators and Ryan White providers and hearing what kinds of questions that um, they were asking us and what kinds of questions they were asking each other on other you know, webinars like this and that kind of thing. And we really hope that this list can be helpful to you as well um, I'll add that we visit the, uh, the, list, the list regularly to see if there's any new questions that need to be added based on we're, what we're hearing. So if you have any questions that come to mind during this presentation about getting your clients financial help, feel free to chat those as well, or you can always email us after the presentation. So we've talked about um, some resources in steps three and four for getting the application started, and we're moving our way through the continuum. Um, and there are lots of, I should mention, there's lots of other great resources under each step, and we're just highlighting a few of them. So be sure to visit the ACT Center for the full list of resources when you're ready. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, talk about what you can use if there's a problem with your client's application. And so because we know that things don't always go perfectly, we, st we do strongly recommend that you as much as you can, help monitor the client's application and be there for them to help answer any questions that they may have. So um, as enrollment assisters or um, case managers and navigators, you may already have ways to help monitor the application process. And some of you may already have the ability to access your client's application, but others of you may not. And so finding out first if you can even get the information on your client's behalf could be really helpful as you track the application. And in either case, you can use resources like the Enrollment Tracking Worksheet. Um, Mira mentioned that earlier. Um, that's a worksheet that we've developed to record the key information in monitoring the application. And the worksheet is great because it provides some detailed guidance on the steps to help the client through the process. And it also includes both an enrollment checklist as well as a renewal checklist that you can use. So wherever your clients are you know, sort of in that phase, um, you have an appropriate checklist to use. So in the event that your client is turned down for coverage, it's really good to know how to appeal an unfavorable decision. And I know this is something that Mira um, mentioned briefly earlier as well. And there's a whole page on the healthcare.gov site that's devoted to appeals, so we're not going to go into too much detail here. But the, the page is where you can find all the information about the process and the actual forms that you would need to file the appeal are also on that website. And what's nice about the website is it lists all the possible reasons that someone might be able to file an appeal. And it includes things like hearing maybe that they're not eligible for a plan, or that they can't enroll at this time for whatever reason, or that they can't get financial help when maybe they thought that they were qualified for some kind of financial assistance. So there's a process for that appeal. But assuming that all has gone well and that your client is actually now covered, you may be asking yourself, um, you know, how can I help my clients make the most of their coverage? And that's really the focus of our step six in the continuum, which provides tools and resources for helping clients use their coverage. Um, or, you know, as we say, making the most of their coverage. And these tools are really intended to help raise the health literacy of the clients, meaning that they're, they're meant to help people understand the terminology and the process, 
you know, what's the benefits to being covered, and what are their rights, um, you know, at the doctor's office or in the application process, so that they may uh, really, you know, have that increased access to quality as a result of their being covered. And one of the tools that we're super excited to tell you about today, um, I know Tijan mentioned a brand new tool um, that we developed for folks that aren't enrolled yet. And we also have a tool that was just launched today on the website. So we're very excited. Um, and this one is called Making the Most of Your Coverage. And so, um, designed as a tool that you can print out for clients or you can leave it in your waiting room. And um, there's a slide here that says Know Where to Go for Care. And this is just what one of the pages of the tool looks like. The resource itself is actually several pages. And it walks the client through the process of knowing how to either activate their coverage, it explains where to go for care in terms of um, distinguishing between primary care versus urgent care versus the emergency room, and, and in what situation do you go to each. And the tool can be used either in its entirety or it can be used in pieces. So if you just need the page on where to go for care, um, you can use that. If you, you know, want to give them the whole A to Z um, tool, then that's, that's great too. It's actually it's designed, it's designed both ways. It works really well all together and can be standalone if you need it to be. And throughout the tool, we've included a variety of information such as defining some key terms, providing some tips so that the process goes a little more smoothly. And we really hope that this tool helps address the need for, um, for more client handouts that we, that's a need that we heard about that helps explain how to use their new coverage. So please check it out online and let us know what you think. And then finally, we're at step seven, which is um, how can I help enrolled clients keep their coverage? And so before we go too far into discussing the renewal process itself, I'm going to take us through three brief polling slides. They're, they're really quick. They're each with a true and false question. So let me read the first one. The first one is, eligible clients can sometimes enroll or change insurance coverage outside of the open enrollment period. True or false? So this is Mira, and I'm looking at the results. I'm sure lots of you are looking at them as well. Um, let's just give people another second or two to finish entering responses. And it looks like almost exactly three quarters are saying true, and about a quarter are saying false. Great. Thanks, Mira. So the answer to this question is actually true um, because there is something called special enrollment periods, and not everybody may have heard of these. Um, they, it applies to certain personal circumstances in which somebody can actually enroll outside the open enrollment period. Great, so we can move on to the next question. The second one is, the Ryan White program can provide coverage for some services not covered by insurance. True or false? So there are some answers coming in. Just give it another couple seconds for people to enter their responses. It's hanging in pretty solidly at about 94, 94 true and 6% false. Great, Go ahead, thanks, Mira. Um, that is awesome. The answer to this one is also true, so well done. Um, depending on your jurisdiction, the Ryan White program may still cover some things like premiums, um, out-of-pocket expenses, and it may also be available to cover uh, medical case management as well as transportation. And what's really unique about that is that those are things that are not typically covered in insurance. So the goal of the Ryan White program in providing those is really to help retain clients in care. All right, and so bear with me for one more polling question, the third one. And uh, Lori, I'm just going to add, client, if you can hear me. Oop. This is Mira. I'm just going to add, if you can hear oh, me, yeah. that um, just to clarify, um, medical case management and transportation are two examples of the types of services that the Ryan White program may provide in your area, even for clients who have insurance. But there may also be other services that are provided. Those were just a couple of examples. Great. Thanks for that clarification. 
Awesome. Okay, if everybody's ready for the third one, um, if your client got tax credits or other financial help for their 2015 coverage, they will always be eligible for that amount of support. True or false? All right, let's give this one just another couple of seconds to come in. And it looks like a few people aren't quite sure, but maybe about 5% are saying true and 95% are saying false. Okay, great, thanks. Um, the answer to this question is false. Um, and that's because federal financial assistance is actually recalculated every year based on income and house, household size, and so those things can obviously change year to year. And what's important to remember, and one of the reasons that we put this in, is that this works both ways in that financial help, it obviously could decrease. We um, you know, wouldn't want that, but it could decrease from one year to the next. But it can also increase from year to year based on those, um, those two factors. So it's just good to know. So thank you for participating in those polling questions. Um, so to help you help your clients in keeping their coverage, we do have a tool called a Plan Renewal Flowchart, which will help take you through the five steps of the renewal process. And this tool, um, it basically walks you through five questions. The goal of the tool is to help you, um, is to really to understand why clients need to update their marketplace applications and you know, help you guide your clients through the process. So the kinds of questions that you see on the plan renewal flowchart, I know it's really hard to probably see it on the slide because it's, it's small, um, but the questions are, uh, was your client enrolled in a plan you know, in the previous year? Is your client's current plan even still available for the next calendar year? Um, did your client receive any tax credits or cost sharing reductions for that year? Has the client authorized collection of their tax data? from the IRS for that particular calendar year, and then what are the results of um, the eligibility determination for that year when it comes to tax credits or cost sharing reductions. And an example of how this form works, since you might not be able to see it really clearly on the, so on the slide, is that for each question there's a yes or no option. And so, for example, for something like um, question number four, uh, has the client authorized collection of tax data? So if the answer is yes, you see on the form it, it would say, um, you know, use the, um, it would tell you that the marketplace is going to use the information to calculate the tax credits and cost sharing. But if the client answers no, then the tool is going to recommend that you inform your client that without the updated tax data, that the current tax credits and cost sharing reductions that they may be getting, that they're going to end at the, um, the end of the year. So that's an example of the type of information that's in that, in that chart. And then last but not least, at least for today anyway, there's another um, tool that we want to talk about. It's in Step 7. Um, this one is a special enrollment period fact sheet. So this is, I mentioned a, a moment ago on one of the polling questions, but for folks that um, need to enroll outside the open enrollment period, uh, this tool explains what those special circumstances or life events may be that occur outside the normal open enrollment period that would make them eligible to enroll at that time. Um, so it's just it's a nice um, tool to have in your back pocket. And one thing I do want to emphasize is that open enrollment or um, special enrollments don't apply when you're talking about Medicaid because Medicaid open enrollment is all the time. And then uh, regardless of whether your client is enrolling, whether it's open enrollment or they're renewing or they're getting covered in a special enrollment period, it's really important that clients stay enrolled and up to date in their ADAP. Um, as, you know, and as long as your client updates ADAP, then they're not going to risk any interruption in their medication that may be provided by ADAP. So another way to help your clients stay covered is to help, um, help your clients update their marketplace applications and um, also make sure that your clients know that they can review and change their plans during open enrollment if they need to. And so with that, I just want to thank you again for your time and for participating in the polls, and I'm going to turn it back over to Tajan. Thanks, Lori. So as a reminder, this is where you can find us on the web. All the tools presented on today's call can be found here. Again, this webinar will be recorded and archived, and all participants will receive an email when it's posted so you can share this with your colleagues. 
I'm hoping that you'll be able to join us for our next webinar in September. Our pre-enrollment webinar will provide updates on what's new and different for this year's open enrollment period, and we'll also share some new tools to help you with your enrollment efforts. If you are on our mailing list, then we'll let you know whenever we have a webinar or a new resource to announce. We really don't send too many emails, only when there's something new to share. So I encourage you to sign up for a mailing list, please. Also, the ACA Center is conducting a needs assessment to learn more about your successes and challenges, helping eligible Ryan White HIV AIDS program clients get enrolled in health coverage, use their coverage, and stay enrolled. All Ryan White program grantees and funded service providers, including those both in Medicaid expansion and non-expansion states, are encouraged to participate in this. The assessment should be completed by a senior staff person with direct program management responsibilities and knowledge about your organization's efforts to support enrollment. Your input will be really valuable to us and it will really help us to develop resources and, and training for grantees and service providers. The assessment only takes about 13 minutes to complete and our deadline has been extended through Friday, August 7th. To learn more about this and to participate, please go to the link that we're just going to send you in our chat feature. Also, you can reference the link that's here on the slide deck. Also, if you're a Ryan White HIV AIDS program grantee, please share this page with your other funded service providers and ask them to respond to. We greatly appreciate that. Now, just as a reminder to you all, when the webinar ends, an evaluation form will pop up on your screen. Please don't close out the screen. Please fill it out and let us know what you learned today and how you think we could improve next time when we do this. Now, we have a lot of time to take some questions, so we're going to go ahead and look at some of the questions that have come in through our chat feature. So the first question that has come through is about coverage completion, and the question reads, Coverage completion, that's an interesting phrase I've, I haven't heard before. Is this the same as wraparound services or support services? So I'm going to ask Mira to go ahead and answer that question for us. Okay, great. Thanks, Tajan. So coverage completion is a phrase that a lot of people are using, and um, actually there isn't a formal definition but I'm going to give you the definition that we use based on our conversations with a lot of grantees. Um, and that is that coverage completion is the process of examining the array of services that are covered by other payment sources. So looking at what's available from marketplace, Medicaid, et cetera, and then coordinating the use of those resources with your available Ryan White program funds to fill in gaps um, to address affordability and address remaining barriers to care. So barriers like geography or immigration status are some examples, um, as well as services that are not covered by those other payers. All right. Thanks, Mira. The next question that has come in is, is there a system or website which provides a listing of all patient navigators, certified application counselors, et cetera, who have this 10 role Ryan White HIV clients in each state if it isn't done in house. So I'm going to ask Stuart, our principal investigator, to answer that question for us. Thanks, to John. Uh, to the best, best of my knowledge, um, you could get a listing of who has received federal funding for certified application counselors, but that listing would not necessarily be uh, HIV specific. However, there is a really helpful website, uh, and it's, uh, we can chat out the address. It's called localhelp.healthcare.gov, and you can search by your zip code, and that website will refer you to organizations that have certified assistant counselors or a centralized help system for people seeking um, uh, enrollment into uh, coverage options. Thanks, Stuart. Third question that has come in is, if the client isn't willing to sign up for marketplace insurance but is qualified financially, can you use the client's positive status to get an exemption from the marketplace, such as sending a letter of denial? I'm going to ask Stuart to answer that question as well. Thank you. Uh, my understanding is that marketplaces, unlike Medicaid, 
uh, do not issue letters of denial, um, and particularly in this case, uh, you're talking about someone who has, for whatever reasons, chosen not to necessarily enroll in a marketplace option. What I think you're asking about is how do we document the requirement that uh, case managers and HIV programs vigorously pursue insurance options for their clients. For that, I would recommend that people listen to a webinar that HRSA had in November of 2014 on the issue of vigorous pursuit. And we are also going to chat out the link to that archived webinar. I also add that each jurisdiction may be managing that slightly different in terms of how they are asking organizations, HIV providers, to document vigorous pursuit. So I might also check with your ADAP or Part A or Part B program about what they are looking for to document uh, a vigorous pursuit. Thanks, Stuart. The next question that has come in is, is it possible for HIV positive veterans to benefit from the ACA if they're already receiving care through the VA? I'm going to ask Mira to take that question. Thanks, Tajan. So, um, yes, even if veterans um, who are HIV positive are already receiving care through the Veterans Administration medical sites, they can qualify for Ryan White HIV AIDS program um, services. That's um, been expressly uh, stated in HAB policy. And they also are eligible for marketplace insurance, Medicaid, and Medicare. Thanks, Mira. The next question is, will the making the most of your coverage tool be translated into Spanish? And Mira is going to answer that as well. OK. So um, yes, it is absolutely going to be. Both of the two client-facing tools that we've just released will be translated into Spanish and also into Haitian Creole. However, um, we're actually piloting both of those and getting some additional feedback from specific communities. So it's going to be just a few more weeks until we can release the translated versions. I think you can expect them um, ideally by September and definitely before open enrollment. All right. Thanks, Vera. Next question is, do you have any information or materials specifically for youth and adults, i.e. clients who are dependent on Medicaid, not employed, not familiar with health systems, et cetera? Okay, so um, actually uh, this is a great question because one of the things that we're asking about in our needs assessment is for people's input on population-specific materials that you would like to see. So um, I'm hoping that whoever submitted this question will actually do two things. First, um, please do complete the needs assessment so that um, we can sort of weigh in your input there along with everybody else who's responding around what kinds of tailored resources we should be developing. And also, uh, sort of more immediately, if you could send us an email at acentr at jsi.com, that would be great. Um, if that didn't fully answer your question, go ahead and chat us and let us know if, uh, if you were asking something slightly different. Okay. The next question that has come in is, most of the clients I work with have Medicare and or Medicaid. Does the website provide information for additional health coverage for patients who have Medicare? I'm going to ask Stuart to try and tackle this question. Yes, yeah, so I assume um, in terms of website, you're talking about uh, the Target website and the ACTA section of that website. Um, we do not sp speak specifically to the types of supplemental coverage uh, that people on Medicare in particular often enroll in. However, um, such supplemental coverage is certainly not required. And the Ryan White uh, HIV AIDS program can provide coverage completion, the term we started our Q&A session talking about, for people with Medicare or Medicaid who still have unmet needs. But that coverage completion will be state-specific 
uh, and I would encourage people to contact their Part B and or ADAP programs to see what that would consist of. Great. Thanks, Stuart. Next question that we're going to try and tackle here is, we have clients on ADAP that are comfortable with just having ADAP and no other comprehensive insurance. How can we get these clients to possibly enroll into other insurances? I'm going to ask Mira to try and answer that. Okay, great. Um, so honestly, those are the clients that we're really thinking the most about right now, and almost all of the new tools that we're putting out there are designed to help you work with those clients on the specific issues that you're raising. So um, the two tools that I would most highly recommend for this purpose would be uh, the client-facing tool for pre-enrollment called Get Covered for a Healthy Life. That's the consumer question and answer. And also our discussion guide, which um, as Tajan mentioned, is already up on our website, but we're going to actually be posting an updated version of that sometime in the next few weeks. So, um, as, and that tool will also be developed uh, and translated into Spanish. So hopefully those will help you look at what some of the different scenarios are that your clients might have in mind. We've answered specifically questions like, I'm happy with my Ryan White coverage, so why would I want to get health insurance? And you can talk with them about things like unexpected expenses and catastrophic events and coverage for other family members and all sorts of other um, explanations that we've pulled together for you. So I hope you'll find that helpful. Okay. Another question that has come in, I'm going to see if we can try and tackle it, is these resources are excellent for case management staff. However, sometimes clients don't fully comprehend a verbal assistance from a case manager on why it's important to enroll and attain health insurance. Does the ACA have any available helpful visual videos around why it's very important to enroll? Yeah, so this is Mira. I'll just jump in here. Um, one uh, video that I'll bet a lot of you have seen is from the Kaiser Family Foundation, um, and it's called the U-Tunes. Um, we'll try to chat that link out to you guys sometime in the next couple of minutes. Um, so that's a great um, resource that kind of goes over the basic terms and concepts, and it's animated. It's really easy to, to, to uh, watch and kind of keep track of, and it's not much more than five minutes. Um, we are going to be working on something similar here at the ACA Center designed specifically for your clients, but I don't have a date for that just yet. So. Um, I can't promise that anything would be ready anytime soon. Um, and it looks like we're going to be able to chat out that U-Tunes video link pretty soon. So I hope you'll take a look at that, um, and um, I think you'll find it is a pretty good start. So I'm just giving you guys a little bit more time just to see if there are any more questions. Just as a reminder to you all, we will be sending you a summary of the questions and answers that have been provided on this webinar, and even the ones that we receive after the webinar. So I'm going to just take a couple of seconds just to see if there are any last minute questions that come up. Okay. So an additional question that has come up is some clients just barely make enough money to afford the insurance through a plan, yet they don't meet Medicaid requirements. They essentially can't afford the Affordable Care Act. What do we do for them? Okay, so it sounds like um, I'm just guessing, this is Mira again, that those clients, that person that wrote in is probably in a state that has not yet expanded Medicaid because in states that have expanded Medicaid, um, if a person is not meeting Medicaid requirements, then they should be able to get um, a subsidized Affordable Care Act plan or qualified health plan, and in many cases should be able to get help from the Ryan White program 
what I would do in your situation um, is speak with your HIV program manager, or if you are the HIV program manager, give a call to your state ADAP program as well as to your Part A grantee if, they, if you're in a, an EMA or a TGA, and ask them what other resources might be available in your area to help your client um, afford the subsidized care. Thanks, Mira. The next question that has come in is, do you have to be a navigator to sign a client up for insurance? I'm going to ask Lori to, take, to tackle that question. Sure, Kijan. So from what I understand, um, CMS has uh, definitions or criteria for who would be considered a certified um, enrollment uh, patient navigator versus a um, a counselor and that kind of thing, but you so that doesn't mean that case managers can't enroll folks just because they don't meet the CMS criteria. They can still walk them through the process. They just might not be able to actually submit the application for them. And with that, there may be some limitations in in terms of what they could actually follow up on and, and get information. You know, we talked about tracking the application earlier, so they may be limited in in that way. Um, so you know. Everybody can. Everybody who's in that role can be involved in the process. It might just be limited to those folks who can actually sort of hit submit on the application, if that makes sense. All right. Thank you so much, Lori. I'm going to just give you guys a couple more seconds if there are any other questions. Um, so there are a couple of questions that came in that we're not quite clear about. So if you didn't get your question answered and you want to resubmit it and just try to spell it out for us a little bit better, um, that would be great. Um, or if we didn't answer your question fully, that would be fine too. Um, and otherwise, I think we can um, probably come to a close in just a minute or two. Right. And regardless, um, we will be sending a summary of the questions and answers that have been provided on the webinar. So even if there are things that we couldn't quite get to, um, we will be addressing it and, and sending you that by email once this webinar is done and once HRSA has given their feedback and input on our answers. So just two more seconds. All right. So it looks like there are no further questions at this time. I'll just remind you again to keep your webinar window open to complete the evaluation when it pops up. Please don't close it. And to sign up for a mailing list if you haven't done so already. And again, if you think of any further questions after this session ends, you can always send us an email at acacenter at jsi.com. And so with that, I want to thank you all for participating. Wish you guys a very great afternoon and goodbye.